right or see if we can invoke some some equality and draw parallelism between our microscopic way of approaching things and our macroscopic uh, knowledge of classical thermodynamics so the um, the number of complexions so at any instant of time during the process of so so once i remove this uh, or make the central display it as uh, you know as something that will allow the exchange of energy uh, e1 is gradually going to change and e2 is also gradually going to change they are going to exchange energies e1 and e2 are gradually however at any instant of time e1 plus e2 is going to be equal to e0 simply because of the fact that this entire thing is uh, an isolated system so it is possible for us to write e0 minus e1 as well okay now the composite system a1 plus a2 which i will call as a0 okay can have can be in a, how many different ways can at any instant of time uh, you can achieve it in e1 times e2 different ways right the composite system such that a1 is an energy e1 and a2 is an energy e2 is nothing can be in omega 1 e1 times omega 2 e2 different ways at any instant of time right so many different possibilities are existing for them to actually have this energy e1 have this energy e2 the composite system both of them together the obviously this omega not is a function of say e1 e2 right so the question that we ask now is when will this energy transfer stop okay or what will be the value of e1 at which no more or e1 or e2 at which no more energy exchange between the two is going to take place okay so we make one assertion okay this is probably the only assertion that we will make without explicitly proving we say that once equilibrium is reached the value of omega not is the maximum once equilibrium is reached the number of ways in which the system can actually arrange itself is is the one which has the maximum value and therefore the probability that you will see it in that system is the highest okay consequently our problem reduces to that of a maximization or extremization problem where we have to <coughs> maximize omega not okay with respect to the variables e1 and v2 subject to the constraint that e not is equal to e1 plus e2 right so how will you extremize functions which have constraints you have you have heard of lagrange multiplier method right so we will use exactly the same thing so we will form a composite function omega not bar which is nothing but omega 1 e1 times omega 2 e2 plus lambda times e not minus e1 minus e2 okay we need to extremize this so extremizing this with respect to the variables e1 and e2 so what happens when we so when we want to extremize we have to differentiate this entire function with respect to e1 equal to 0 and then with respect to e2 and then equal to 0 what do we get we get do omega not bar with respect to e1 and that would mean do omega 1 by do e1 times omega 2 minus lambda equal to 0 and do omega bar not with respect to e2 will be do omega 2 by do e2 times omega 1 minus lambda equal to 0 now these two equations are telling you that do omega 1 by do e1 omega 2 is actually equal to do omega 2 by do e1 times omega 1 so if you do a little bit of algebra this turns out to be do ln omega 1 by do e1 
is equal to dou ln omega 2 by dou e 2. And during this process, remember we have kept the number of species and the volume in each thing a constant, right. So, we made an assertion without proof. We said that the energy exchange between the two systems will take place until this is a maximum value. So, once this has reached a maximum value, there will be a E1 bar and a corresponding E2 bar which is equal to E0 minus E1 bar that each of the subsystems will have. And once that E1 bar and E2 bar have reached, then no more energy transfer will take place. But the condition for you to find that E1 bar and E2 bar is this. Okay. So, we call this beta 1 and this as beta 2. We are just calling it by different names, beta 1 and beta 2. Is this okay until now, until so far? Now, in order to basically understand what this is, we need actually thermodynamics to draw the parallelism between statistical. You see, we are we are obviously trying to obtain uh, expressions for uh, classical thermodynamic quantities from statistical mechanics. So, we cannot do away with thermodynamics. We have to use results of thermodynamics to draw the parallelism. Okay, so when you write the first law. We just wrote this in the beginning of the class. So, we said that du is equal to Tds because I am going to keep my volume constant, right. So, dou s by dou u at constant n and v turns out to be 1 by t, right. At equilibrium, I will have 1 by t1 equal to 1 by t2 or t1 equal to T2. Correct? Yes or no? At equilibrium. Yes. Now look at look at this expression here and look at this expression here. This is dou ln omega 1 by dou E1. This is dou S by dou U. And in this case, U is nothing but E. That is the internal energy of the system, right? So dou S1 by dou E1 N1 comma V1 will be equal to 1 by T1 and do S2 by do E2 by E2 will be equal to 1 over T2 from thermodynamics. Therefore, from this expression and this expression, we are kind of tempted to write the following do s by do ln omega is equal to 1 divided by beta t by looking at this expression right here right which is equal to beta 1 or beta do omega by do e is basically beta so if it belongs to one uh, system 1 then it is beta 1 if it belongs to system 2 then it is beta beta 2 and similarly do s1 by do e1 is 1 by t1. So, I am just removing the suffixes 1 here because it can be any arbitrary system as long as n and v are constant. So, do s by do ln omega is 1 by beta t and this has to be what? A constant, right. Now, what Boltzmann did was, this is where Boltzmann left it, okay, this was written down by Boltzmann. And uh, basically, he thought that since this approach is kind of connecting something at classical thermodynamics level and the microscopic uh, nature of the system, uh, this has to be some sort of a universal constant. Okay. Later on, Planck came and said S is equal to k ln omega. Okay. And then if you did this dou S by dou ln omega, you would get the Boltzmann's constant k. So, this 1 by beta t happens to be a universal constant and we call it the Boltzmann's constant. Okay. So, right now if you see we have an expression for the macroscopic thermodynamic quantity 
in terms of this number of complexions omega, which has got nothing to do with thermodynamics, right? It has the total number of ways you can arrange something. So, S is equal to k ln omega is one such statistical mechanical expression which connects the microscopic quantity to the macroscopic thermodynamic property of the system. We can now do this for different cases, which I will do in the next class. So, this in this case, we did not. So, uh, so this kind of shows you what beta and temperature seems seem to have a similar uh, meaning or similar effect. So, beta might be true when you are talking about the thermodynamics of the system using the uh, the microstate approach, whereas temperature has a meaning of equality when you are taking the classical thermodynamic approach, right? So, beta and T are related through just one constant, which is the Boltzmann's constant. Now, the next job is to see what will happen if you actually allow this central piston or whatever this thing that is allowing the exchange of energy to not only exchange energy, but in addition to that also move. Okay. So, if you allow it to move, then what should be the conditions for equilibrium? P1 should be equal to P2, right? right? In addition to that, if you are also allowing the condition for them to exchange the particle numbers, then what should be the condition? The chemical potentials in the both ends, the, the exchange of species will happen until mu1 is equal to mu2. So, we will see how these quantities also are coming from just this omega or the, the microscopic or, or a term that is related more to the microscopic. Uh, nature basically the number of complexions uh, that you can have. Once we do that, we will go on to discuss how this omega comes about and what is how, how how large it is and things like that. Now how we can compute it for some simple systems. Okay, so the basic spirit is this: once you know this omega, then you can also find things like Gibbs free energy, Helmholtz free energy, and all these energies. And all your properties of the system are in some way only derivatives of these quantities, right? So, if you are able to represent, um, say, strain, okay, in terms of microscopic quantities, okay, and you are able to represent the Gibbs free energy in terms of these microscopic quantities or the number of complexions, okay, then dou G by dou E strain, this is Ij strain, will give you some stress right so uh, we will see later that all these things that come here how an how a strain or gibbs free energy is represented in terms of the microscopic quantities will be in terms of the uh, positions and the velocities of all the atoms that the system is comprised of okay all helmholtz free energy etc everything will be related only to those things so we have not yet discussed how omega is obtained but we will do that and show you that omega depends on these microscopic quantities, which is basically the po position and the momenta of all the atoms. Okay.